Hello, and welcome to A Layman Looks at the Word with Hal Richardson. This time we're continuing with our studies of proofs the Bible is true. This will be lesson five in the series. Last time we were talking about the Shroud of Turin and Jesus' crucifixion and ended with Psalms 22, a crucifixion psalm. The shroud's a burial cloth that many people believe Jesus was buried in. There has been controversy over the shroud. Years ago, a team was allowed to carbon test the shroud and dated it to the Middle Ages. But this piece they tested was later discovered to be a patch that was professionally put on the shroud and woven in place. And the original material was dated at 2,000 years. The latest technology, and with magnification, found an inscription near the face of the man in the shroud that was from a Roman official that placed the identification of the body as Jesus of Nazareth. It seems that the words were transferred to the shroud during the resurrection when the image was also transferred. Many people believe that this is the burial shroud of our Lord Jesus. Here is what the face looks like enhanced. A crucified heel. In Jerusalem, there's an ossuary of a man named John, not, not John the Apostle, which proves at the time of Jesus, crucifixion was used by Rome in executions. Skeptics say that there is no proof that the Romans crucified people, but this heel is proof that that type of execution did take place. The Impure Papyrus Writings of an Egyptian found in the 19th century that describes the plagues on Egypt at the time of Moses in this writing, seven out of ten that are described in the Bible are present in this writing. And that all took place in Exodus 7. This writing was made by a man outside of the Bible who was an eyewitness and wrote notes about the plagues that were placed on Egypt by God at the hands of Moses. The Moabite Stone also called the Misha Steel, is dated to 840 B.C. It was found in 1868 in Jordan, which was the ancient Moab. It tells of the oppression of King Omri of Israel on Moab and of Israel's God, Yahweh as recorded in 1 Kings 16 and in Micah 6. This history is written by Misha, the king of Moab. When first discovered by missionaries and the villagers found out it was being used to prove the Bible, the stone was broken into pieces and sold. However, the pieces were recovered and the stone is now together and is in the Louvre Museum in France. Silver amulet bracelets found in Israel by Gabriel Barquet, an important archaeologist. They were found by accident, and they date from 600 B.C. that have the priestly blessing from number 6. There are not many proofs from the period of 600 B.C. that Israel was in the Promised Land. These bracelets are such proof and have this inscribed. Number 624, the Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. And the Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. Joshua's altar on Mount Ebal. Adam Zertel was a secular archaeologist that had been taught that the Bible was not true. Yet in the 1980s, 
by using the Bible as a guide, he found where Joshua had built an altar and plastered it with inscriptions of the curses of Deuteronomy 28 on Mount Ebal in the Promised Land. The blessings of Deuteronomy 28 were delivered on Mount Gerizim, where no altar was needed. Adam Zertel was able to restore the altar of Joshua and became a believer in Yahweh and the truth of the Bible. This lead book was also found at the site of Joshua's altar. It contains the curses and the tribes that were there at the altar when these curses were recited. Adam Zertel also found a footprint that surrounded the altar. There were many other of these footprints found where worship was done as the Israelis entered the promised land. These footprints that the Israelis put down as they entered the promised land were actually learned in Egypt where the pharaohs would have their enemies' names inscribed on the soles of their sandals to tread on them. God told Israel that wherever their foot tread, the land would be theirs, in Deuteronomy 11.24. These places were like natural amphitheaters, where the priests leading the worship could be heard by the people. They are mentioned in Scripture as Gilgal, and there are several of them found near Jericho and all the way up into Samaria. Solomon's Gates Solomon built walls around Hazor, Megiddo, and Gezer in 1 Kings 9. In 1957 to 1970, Excavations by Yegel Yadin found that the gates of all these cities and the walls were of the same design. And this proves that the Bible is correct, that all were made by Solomon. Here is a close-up of one of those gates. King Hezekiah's Tunnel built in 800 B.C. from the siege of Jerusalem by Assyria, discovered by Edward Robinson in 1838. The tunnel was 1,750 feet long and 120 foot deep through solid rock to bring water into the city, 2 Chronicles 32 and 2 Kings 20. The tunnel does exit into the pool of Shilom, where Jesus told the blind man to go wash his eyes after Jesus had made mud with his spit and put it in his eyes. The Temple Mount. Originally it was built by Solomon, and it was destroyed by Nebuchadnezzar, then replaced by the Temple of Ezra and Zerubbabel after the captivity, and rebuilt with a huge retaining wall by Herod the Great. This is the holiest place in Israel for Jews and Muslims. Destroyed by Rome in A.D. 70, there is no temple now. The Muslim Mosque of Alaska and the Dome of the Rock are here on the mount now, and the western wall is what remains of the retaining wall of the Temple Mount has been found the Steps of Ascent from Psalms 120 to 134 that are 200 feet wide and led up to the top of the mount. Also Robinson's Arch which was at the top of the stairway and in 1968 there was an engraved stone found in that area that it is written on the place of trumpeting, which signifies the beginning and end of the Sabbath, where the trumpeters would stand near the stairway. All of this proves that the New Testament concerning the temple is true. 
Here is how Robinson's arch would have looked in the temple days. The Tabernacle in Shiloh. The Bible says that for 369 years, the Tabernacle of the Lord was in Shiloh. There is a rock base there of the exact dimensions. Here's the way the tabernacle looked. Here's a copy of the tabernacle in modern times. The House of David Steele. In 1994 in Dan was a stone inscription found from 840 BC of an Arabian king that took Judah and Israel that mentioned David who had been dead for 150 years, proof that the house of David existed, as it says in the Bible. Jericho. Bryant Wood found excavations that proved the Bible story of Jericho being taken by Israel in Joshua 6. The walls were down like a ramp, and there was no silver or gold or bronze, or burned remains, and the grain was still in jars. And this was what God commanded of Joshua. Bryant Wood excavated quite a bit of area here in the time of Jericho to prove these things. Nazareth. Evidence is found that Nazareth was a small village at the time of Jesus. There was a little house found here, and a wine press, and pottery, and tombs, and a round gravestone, all from 2,000 years ago. Skeptics say that 2,000 years ago there was no Nazareth. Well, they were wrong. The City of David, Water Shaft, and Milo. Charles Warren found the water shaft of 2 Samuel 5.8 in part of Jerusalem that was called the City of David. The Milo, which is a rock's foundation, was there with the water shaft before David took it from the Jebusites. The City of David administration building, 51 bulles were found, which is a small seal on clay with a cord binding a document. Also royal tombs and the water shaft and a large milo foundation of rocks. It is also called the House of Bulle, which was probably David's palace on top of the milo, 2 Samuel 5.9. The Enuma Elish, found in Nineveh, Iraq, by Henry Layard in 1849, they are seven Babylonian tablets that are similar to the seven days of creation recorded in Genesis. The Enuma Elise describes the earth as having no form and empty, but the King James Version says formless and void. They cover the six days of creation and the great God. There are several pagan things as well. The similarity of these ancient Babylonian writings had to have come from Noah and his sons. All of this evidence is to prove that the Holy Bible, which we have today, is true. It is the Word of God and is written so we can know how God has dealt with men over the course of history. The Bible is a revelation of God to man. Jesus the Messiah and God's Son is the center of the Bible and our Savior. If you don't have a relationship with Him, change your mind about God. Ask Jesus to forgive you and come into your heart and save you and become part of God's family. This is Hal Richardson. Join me next time. We'll start a brand new subject. Bye for now.